Hey lovelies. Ah, uh, it's um really nice to be here again. Let me rearrange myself. That's not looking good. That's a little bit better. Thank you so much for your kind welcome to my my first floss tube. Last time um I'm I'm really grateful for your kind comments and and for being so welcoming. I don't know why I would have expected any different. This community is just the best. And it was a good lesson that <laughs> things that you're frightened of are really very often not real. So thank you for helping me learn that lesson again. And it's really nice to be back. Today's going to be a shorter video. Um, just a little wrap up from Expo. Um, a few things I forgot from last week. And um, I think that's going to be a recurring segment. Things I forgot from last week. And a little bit about what's coming up. So I hope you've got a nice cup of something and a few minutes to sit and chat and stitch. And yeah, oh, another big thank you before we go any further. Thank you so much for everyone who placed an order or spoke to their needlework store about my, my new designs. I am really tremendously grateful. I know, I know times are tough for everybody at the moment. I'm Believe me, I know. And I'm, I'm enormously grateful for everybody who, you know, was able to do that. So thank you. Thank you. Everything is on its way to you. Um, I got all the orders out within, I think, three or so days from the end of Expo. So they're well on their way. Um, I appreciate your patience. They do have a long way to go for, for those of you in the US and overseas and excitingly I have some charts going to the Netherlands for the very first time so there are two stores in the Netherlands who will be um, stocking my charts who are my first my first stores in Europe so I'm really thrilled about that their information as well as all the stores um, will be up on my stockist page on my blog at mojostitches.com um, Please bear with me. I'm, I'm still catching up with everything from Expo. That, that will be there by the end of the week, as will all the blog posts about all the designs and finishing tips and everything. So thank you for your patience. Um, Expo is, is uh, <laughs> it's a great deal of work. And um, due to the time difference and everything, it, it takes a bit of a physical toll. So it, it takes me a little while to recover. So thank you for your patience. But everything's out there everything's flying its way to you and also a big thank you for to everyone who was uh, so excited about the new thread col collaboration I did with with um, Cottage Garden Threads the bookshelf range um, that sold out at Expo really quickly so Cottage Garden Threads are busy stitching more and um, appreciate your patience um, they are getting them out to you as soon as as soon as possible, and I hope you think they're worth the wait. I'm I'm thrilled to see everybody start using them. I think it's going to be really really exciting. <sighs> so yes, just a really quick expo sort of wrap up. It's you know industry stuff, but it's it's a great opportunity for designers to sort of see each other's work as well and sort of get to you know talk to shop owners and everything as well for for um new and and emerging designers and particularly for those of us overseas expo is a really really important thing um because it's really the only time that that shops can can sort of you know have have really easy access to to our work and for those of us who can't go to nashville the in-person really big market um, I'm in Australia, the travel costs are just not, you know, it's not something that can be done. So it's, for those of us who can't go to Nashville, it's a really, really important thing every year. So it's it's a lot of work, but it's done. And I, I survived the, the crazy hours with some help from, from some friends who helped keep me company. So big thank you to um, Deb from Frog Cottage Designs, who's another Australian designer. And um, she does beautiful work. And we sort of 
message back and forth and help keep each other awake, which was wonderful. And also a really big thank you to um, Susan from Sweet Wing Studios we debuted at the first expo in this in the little newbie booth together and um she helped keep me company too and she's absolutely lovely and does beautiful work so i hope you i hope you um you know go and go and check out both of their work they, they're just really really lovely people and helped keep me awake so thank you for that so yes and all the shop owners as well who particularly the ones who took the time to come by and say hello personally it was um, very much appreciated so yeah that was exciting it's um it's always exciting but it's it's a, it's a little bit you get a bit trepidatious as well you sort of work work so hard for six months and then you know by yourself and then put everything out there and just really hope people like it so I'm really thrilled that, that people have been so kind and that charts are starting to fly their way towards you now these all these new releases will also be up in my Etsy store in about 10 days from now um, in hard copy and in PDF and the reason there's a delay it's part of the deal at Expo that shops who participate get an opportunity to sell them before um, anybody else does even me so um, thank you for you, those of you who are waiting for the PDFs. They will be up um, in about 10 days and I will talk about a little bit when that is sort of and why that's happening at the end. So they're coming um, and they'll be there soon. So thank you very much. Okay. Oh, things I forgot last time. First of all, I forgot to show you the original for Among the Roses. And I'm so excited that so many of you are really looking forward to stitching this one. Um, if you saw my last floss tube, I mentioned having to make a bit of an executive decision um, when uh, reproducing this one because the color of this beautiful bird's sort of neck and, and breast here, I've had a devil of a time trying to reproduce at, in the original it's a bit hard to see with the glass reflecting in the original it's a very sort of dusky orange um, it is quite distinctly orange but it's a very sort of pinky orange and I had such a hard time trying to find a color that matches that exactly I tried all the oranges in my well not all of them but all the remotely appropriate ones in my ever-growing pile of oranges and just none of them worked at all. Even the ones that seem to be a pinky kind of tone, that give the same kind of tones, were just too bright for everything else, either too dark or too bright, and just took over the whole thing. So instead, I went for some slightly pinker colours, but that better kind of reproduced the the tone of the original so yeah i will have pictures and information up on my blog as well as closest dmc colors to the original in case you want to you know make it more orange yourself um as i said i don't have every orange that exists i'm, I'm working on um, <laughs> but i don't have every one yet so there may be some out there that um work really well but also you can just go with what's charted and I think it makes a, a really lovely piece um, as always this also has a DMC conversion um, and because this these needlepoint ones have so many colors um, it's a really good idea to kind of use the over dyes that you have that are in it but then use the DMC for ones that you don't because a lot of them only have small amounts of stitching. I do it in the over dies because I like the kind of age tone they give you. But, you know, you can do the whole thing in DMC. I've seen that done with Mary Barton's work. It's beautiful. You can do a silk conversion. I've seen that done. It's beautiful. Or you can mix and match, you know. Um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, 
that's going to work out beautifully. Or, you know, pick a few of your favourites that are in the overdies and do the rest in DMC. You know, this is your piece that you're going to hang on your wall, so you make it how you like it. Anyway, I'm really excited to see people start stitching this. Oh, I did say as well, I had a lovely... Um, I had a lovely request to see to consider whether that would work um, being stitched on ale the same that I used for Mary Barton's work last year and I did a floss toss and looks fabulous I think so if you've got the same fabric and you want to do it the same as Mary Barton's work I think that's going to work really beautifully the reason I went with the paler background was because the original had a lighter background but you stitch it on whatever you like I think that's going to be great so I forgot to show you that last time and I think I made a little bit of a hash of explaining <laughs> a little bit about the greens used in afternoon in the garden um, as you can see this beautiful piece um, has, has a heavy use of greens and particularly in this area around the house here it's got um it uses four greens in a quite um in a gradient so it, it's a sort of color story with that goes down in color saturation if that makes any sense and i mentioned to get the original color i used where is it Gentle Arts Baby Spinach, but I used a recent dye lot. Now, the reason I mentioned that was because this is the baby spinach that I used, and this is a baby spinach from Gentle Arts, from an older one from my stash. As you can see, they are completely different colours. Completely different colours. So... I use this one because that is the closest as I could get to the original. When you come to stitching your own, all you need are four greens that work well together. The way I stitched it, these are all in Gentle Arts. The darker green is grape leaf, then the baby spinach, then two kind of olivey greens, which were chives and corn husk. So they are the greens that I used. Now. You can use any four greens that you like. If you're stressed about finding the right baby spinach, don't worry about it. Use four greens that you like. Um, that's going to work just fine. If you want to use, the, if you have the older baby spinach, you can use that too. Just make that the darkest one and make the grape leaf the one down from that. It's going to work fine. It's going to be a little bit darker than this, but again, this is your piece. You stitch it how you like. And um, I hope that hasn't scared you off from stitching this because it really is such a lovely piece. Anyway, we've also had some progress on the mystery of where this came from. As I mentioned in my, my last floss tube, this, the original of this piece, you know, it only has initials and a date. So we don't know, you know, the name of, of the person who stitched it and we don't know exactly where it's from. Um, as I mentioned, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's a European sampler, not an American one. But the clues that we had to try to find out a little bit more about it were the style of house here, which seems quite distinct. And this weird letter here at the end of the alphabet, which is a little bit like a T and an S kind of superimposed on top of each other. So... We've had some we've had some progress and thank you to to everyone who's who's been contributing to to finding out more about this beautiful sampler I, I i feel like i have people at my back and i am so grateful first of all big thank you to deb who um has come across this letter before as an early version of an ampersand or an and symbol now that would fit the placement perfectly because in a lot of samplers they'll have the alphabet and then an and symbol that's a really distinct possibility and i'm looking more into it thank you deb the other suggestion was from the lovely allison who is um 
who has helped me before on, on researching old samplers. So big thank you, Alison. Um, she has seen this letter before in an old German dictionary as a consonant. So I was thinking it's, I was wondering whether it was an early version of a German letter that I'd come across before. So we're going to look more into that as well. And she also thought that the house, the style of house seemed really familiar to houses that she had seen in the Alsace region, which is um, kind of between France and Germany, which, <coughs> excuse me, would fit perfectly with my vibe check, which is when I thought it was French, but not quite French. And, you know, German, but not quite German. So if it's from this area that is, you know, between France and Germany, I think that would make absolutely perfect sense. Of course, we're not going to know 100%, but I think that's a really, really good option. And I will keep you updated with progress as we find out more. Um, yeah, this is Afternoon in the Garden. And yeah, um, we have progress. <laughs> that's really exciting. It's so nice to have, have people contribute and help. So it's wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Um, oh. It's a um, it's a lovely spring morning here. I worked so hard through Expo. I just kind of looked up one day and realised, oh my God, spring has arrived. So it's really nice to see some flowers blooming. We've got wattle out there and um, a little bit more sunshine. So that's been really, really nice to see. I hope it's lovely weather wherever you are today as well. Oh, other thing I forgot to do last time. Since my range of threads is called Bookshelf, the, and the collaboration with Cottage Garden Threads that we did together, um, since it's called Bookshelf, and since, you know, I'm a big reader and I'll be doing, you know, lots of designs that tie in with books and reading and lovely things. What I wanted to do for all the patterns that um, use those threads was to have an accompanying kind of reading suggestion that, that ties in with the theme of it. And I completely forgot to show you last <laughs> week those. So um, I know a lot of people who stitch are big readers as well. So I thought this might be, um, an opportunity for you to find some books that you may not have heard of or come across otherwise. So, um, yeah, for my too many legs pattern with the little smalls, including my little my little huntsman needle book here, and and forgive me, arachnophobes. Yeah, I I appreciate your forbearance. Um, <laughs> I liked when I'm. Um, designing pieces that have um, that are based on actual uh, plants and animals and and you know things in nature or places I like to learn about them and you know increase my knowledge that adds to my um, interest in designing the pieces and and I always like to know stories about you know how designers design and what's their inspiration and everything so I thought I would share some of the things that I read when when I'm designing a piece or, or learning about something. Now, I had a terrible time trying to find information about spiders that wasn't how to identify and kill them immediately. <laughs> and I understand the need for those books, don't get me wrong. But there really wasn't anything that wasn't academic articles about spider behaviour and, you know, um, sort of the bigger context and, and learning more about them. It was quite sort of, I was a bit disappointed about that actually. So I've taken a little slight turn for my book recommendation for, for that piece and <laughs> don't come for me. I'm fully aware that spiders are not insects. They are arachnids. It's a different thing. Couldn't find a good book about spiders. So instead I'm going to recommend the book Extraordinary Insects by and oh, I'm going to butcher this, Sverdrup Sigurdsson. Oh, forgive me, I tried. Um, she's a Norwegian scientist who has an enormous love of insects. 
which is absolutely infectious because you read this book. And I always love um, people who are passionate about their interests and how then just listening to them or reading their work, you get um, sort of <laughs> infected by their enthusiasm. And she does a wonderful job in this book of spreading her enthusiasm for insects and their amazing anatomy and their place in the world. Um, and just in conveying that to you, it's really easy to read. It's um, it's very readable. It's not written in, a, in an academic sense. It's very readable. Um, if you are at all squeamish, <laughs> it's not particularly bad, but, you know, I wouldn't read it while you're eating dinner or something and uh, just to give you a little taste let me read you the first paragraph in the introduction there are more than 200 million insects for every human being living on planet earth today as you sit reading this sentence between one and ten quintillion insects are shuffling and crawling and flapping around on the planet outnumbering the grains of sand on all the world's beaches like it or not, they have you surrounded because Earth is the planet of insects. Now, I love having a different perspective on the world. <laughs> it really gives you a different perspective on the world. It's an absolutely fascinating read. So, yes, if that's something that you think you'd be interested in, highly recommend it. Now, for, <laughs> for in the library, my, my piece with the library books, um, I, oh, it was hard to pick a single book to recommend because books about books are one of my favourite things. And so I had a little, of a, <laughs> little bit of a, a, of a look through some of my book collection and I came across this lovely, this lovely um, one that I've had since uh, I worked at a bookstore many years ago. And this is called A Gentle Madness. Bibliophiles, Bibliomanes and the Eternal Passion for Books by Nicholas A. Basbarnes. I'm getting that wrong too. I'll put all the information in the description box if I can work out how. Or they'll be up on my blog so they can help you find them. This is <laughs> such a beautiful book for anybody who loves books. It's about the kind of people who are obsessed with collecting. And I don't know, you know... Collectors are always a little bit strange. I count myself among them. And this author spent a lot of time with contemporary book collectors, talks about historical ones as well. And, you know, <laughs> just the impulse to collect and how that can, you know, flow over into the criminal at times, but also has led to um, a lot of the reasons that we have the survival of a lot of precious books and the founding of a lot of libraries um, were actually based on book collections by people who lost entire fortunes and, you know, spent their lives collecting books. So it's it's an absolutely fascinating book. It is, um, it's a bit of a tome, so you, you're happy to, you know, it's really good to dip in and out of. Now, um, this is currently out of print, which means it's not being um, reproduced at the moment. It's not being produced. But there are lots of copies available, first of all, from your library. Always check your local library. Um, they might be able to get it in for you. And there is a wonderful um, website that I use for um, tracking down hard-to-find books called abebooks.com so abebooks.com again I'll have that up on my blog that is a hub for secondhand bookstores and antiquarian bookstores all over the world to sell their books in the one place and it is a fantastic place to find um, hard to find books or just books that you don't have in your local area so there's lots of copies of this up there um, check your local second-hand bookstore if you're lucky to have one. And if at all possible, uh, put in a little plea for buying books from an independent bookstore if you can because bookstores are such an important part of community and of sharing knowledge and 
um, it's the enormous conglomerate that I will not will not name um, almost ruined the, the the bookstore industry and and it's been a terrible loss to a lot of communities so if you can that's my little play for the bookstore um, sometimes it can cost a little bit more but the cost of not having the bookstores is is much greater and don't forget your libraries as well libraries are incredibly important so yeah um, ask for them at your library it's it's just a fascinating read and if you, if you know someone who's a real book collector this is the book for them it might um stop them in the in their their you know slow downward spiral into crime <laughs> just to get the books they want which is <laughs> not something i ever stoop to but i understand the impulse <laughs> anyway they're my little book recommendations for these um there will be more coming i hope there's some books that you had not sort of come across before so. oh now before we go any further um oh i have a retreat coming up which is really exciting i'm going to be at the daisy chain stitches retreat in the hunter valley uh, which is about four hours from where i'm staying at the moment um in new south wales in australia that's going to be next weekend and that is being run by um teresa craig who runs the daisy chain stitchery and she has a floss tube channel too but i don't think she's done one in a while so we might have to encourage her to come back um she is running it and also the wonderful nikki noodle who i'm sure you know from floss tube and her beautiful stitching so they're running this it's a brand new retreat. I am beyond excited. Um, my, I'm taking my sister, which is going to be really exciting. She lives at quite some distance from where I am at the moment, so we haven't seen each other much during the pandemic. So I am absolutely thrilled to be spending some time with her and with friends old and new. So if you're coming, I can't wait to can't wait to meet you. That's going to be exciting. And I'll have a little wrap up of that in my my next video. So all my new expo releases will be at the Daisy Chain Stitches Retreat for um, for the first time. So I, I hope people like them. It's it's going to be exciting to actually see people in person, and I just love seeing what everyone stitches and just to spend time together. You know, it's um, such a luxury after these past couple of years. So. I'm really looking forward to it. So that's next weekend. When I come back, <clears throat> all my expo new releases and the new Cottage Garden threads will be up in my Etsy store. So um, again, thank you to everybody for your patience. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get them up and ready to go um, as soon as I get back. Now, <clears throat> two small things before I go. Um, First of all, if you're enjoying Sampler September, if that's something you do, I hope you're stitching on something beautiful. I thought maybe next time I would show you some of the samplers in my collection. I um, can't show you everything, unfortunately, because ones that I want to reproduce in the future, I can't really show now because I'm aware some designers have had things stolen that way. So, you know, we can't do that. But I do have some that I would love to show you and, and share with you. And some of them have beautiful stories. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I was wondering if you guys would be interested in, normally when I'm reproducing a sampler, I don't show anything except maybe a tiny little sneak peek until right at the end. Because again, you know, you've got to be aware of, of you know, other people stealing them and things but I was wondering whether you'd be interested in sort of watching along the process of how you do a reproduction and sort of what's involved and I think there might be a way of including you in that experience um, and in that process if that's something that you would be interested in please leave a comment down below because um, yeah, it's going to involve a little bit of tweaking, but I think there might be a way to do it and that might just be something that's that's interesting to you. So please do let me know if it is and we'll see what we can do. 
So that's exciting. I have samplers to show you next time. But if you do want to participate in Sampler September, I mean, I have samplers up on my Etsy store and I will show you all of my designs individually and tell you the story over, you know, upcoming videos. But I'd like to take my time and sort of, you know, um, share you share with you, you know, the stories and the inspiration and all that kind of things, you know, over time. So, but if you'd like to participate in Sampler September, I have a freebie up on my website that you can download and start stitching today. Now, most people, when they think of samplers, they think of these pale, washed out, kind of sometimes dingy looking things. And sometimes, you know, um, stitchers can look at that and go, why, does, why do people rave about these sampler things? Well, they aren't all pale and they aren't all washed out. Some samplers are actually incredibly colourful. This is a lovely little piece that, as you can see, was done in 1878 when uh, chemical dyes had come in and the little girls who were stitching these things oh you could tell they loved the bright colors and i love the bright colors of this piece this was stitched by h sophia baker from virginia and she finished it proudly on march the 5th 1878. now i have reproduced this and it's up for free on um, my blog at mojostitches.com. If you go there, it's one of the oldest posts, but if you just type in freebie, it should come up. Um, I've it's got a DMC conversion or over dies, and it's got a really, alphabet's always useful for personalizing your own work. And I think it's just a really, really sweet little piece. So that's up there for free that you're welcome to have. And also for free, I, um, adapted the design into a little pillow that I wanted to offer as a little pandemic freebie to, that we could kind of stitch together back in the early days. So that would be very easy to change to a different date or even a different word if you like. But the design, the actual little pin pillow design taken from the beautiful floral border at the bottom there. Um, is also up for free on my website if that's something that you would like to stitch. That's um, my little gift. Now, lastly, before we go, um, I did want to um, thank you again for those of you who left a comment and subscribed to the channel. I promised to do some giveaways when we hit 500. So um, I, I <laughs> talked about one, one giveaway, which was the threads and the finishing pack for my too many too many legs collaboration which involves the the Biscornu and a little scissor frog little needle book I'm also going to give you the finishing pack for these with all that comes from my personal stash but I think we not we might need more than one giveaway so we'll do a few so if you would like to to win something um please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment below. The comments on all of the videos I will use to, to do the random number thingy and we'll, we'll work out the competition thing. So thank you very much for that. And um, I just love sending out things to people. So I think we might do this a fair bit. So I have more expo work to do. I have um, the retreat to prep for and there might just be a little design coming for that as well. And I'm already starting um, work on some Christmas designs that I'm are hopefully going to be out for before too long. So yes, I will have some, some more new designs to show you shortly. And yes, I hope you all have a really lovely, relaxing day and take good care of yourselves. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and um, please be kind to yourselves because, you know, that's a gift to all of us. So I will see you again soon. Thank you so much. Bye.